five mistakes I made on my first Camino. That's what I'm going to share this week. Coming right up. So I'm going to share this week five mistakes that I made on my first Camino in the hope that you don't make them on your first Camino. But hang on, let's put this in context. It's very hard to make mistakes on a Camino. I mean, what, you turn up, you walk. It's not that difficult. Uh, but I know when we're planning our Caminos and particularly our first Caminos, we tend to worry a bit about you know, how, it's, how prepared we're going to be and how it's all going to unfold. So don't stress. Walking a Camino is about turning up and walking. <laughs> but let me share five things that maybe I could have done better. Let's not call them mistakes necessarily. Although the first one is, number one, I was too fat. <laughs> and I've spoken about that in the past. Um, I was, I think, about 15 kilos overweight for my first Camino. Um, I've actually walked three Caminos at about that weight. Um, and it's not a very sensible thing to do because it made my Camino much harder than it needed to be. It put a huge amount of extra stress on my joints, um, particularly my feet. Um, it wasn't a particularly smart thing to do, and yet I made that same mistake you know, on my second and on my third, and I do not intend to do it on my fourth. Yes, you can walk a Camino vastly overweight, but it kind of detracts from the enjoyment a bit because it's it hurts more than it needs to. So, so that was a mistake, walking too fat. Um, number two, and this is a very common one, um, I took way too much gear. And I've talked about that on other videos about how we tend to pack our fears. You know, we think, oh, you know, is one of these going to be enough? I'll take two or um, maybe I'll just throw in an extra one of those. And, and all of that stuff mounts up to extra volume and extra weight in your backpack. Um, I, I found there was a lot of stuff I didn't even use on my first Camino. Uh, I think after three, I pretty much narrowed it down, although there's maybe a couple of items still in there that I might not use, but resist the temptation to take too much stuff. So I, I, would, I would urge you to go the other way almost, because you know if you're there and you suddenly find you need three of those and not two, well, you can get one along the way, whatever that thing is. But um, you know, carrying too much gear, just overcomplicate stuff, it's extra weight and probably unnecessary. Number three, um, this is a tricky one because it's about fitness and training. I think if you can, um, you should definitely raise your level of general fitness before you go on a Camino. Um, you know, so any sort of cardio workout, strengthening workout, all of that's going to help. I'm not saying get out there and do an hour's you know, gym time every week, it's not necessary. Um, if you're already fit, it, it's not necessarily going to be um, necessary f for you to do that. If you're unfit or not used to exercise and generally, you know, you don't walk distances much, um, then some sort of training is certainly going to help you and help you uh, in, in terms of conditioning. So just, you know, general strengthening exercises um, and building up stamina. No need to go nuts, I don't think. There's that saying, you know, that you shouldn't walk your Camino before you walk your Camino. Uh, and what that means generally is, you know, don't, don't try and walk a thousand k's in training because um, you're likely to get injured. And I, I did that on my very first Camino. I was injured before I went because I'd overtrained and overweight and I'd kind of damage myself in training. So um, not altogether very sensible, but some general fitness training is going to pay off. Um, you know, if you're not particularly fit, try to get a little bit fitter and you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Um, number four, this is an interesting one. I didn't explore much. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people are like this, particularly on their first Camino. You, you kind of get a bit one-eyed, you know, and I'm going to follow the yellow, yellow arrows and I'm heading towards Santiago, um, and I don't really want to deviate from the path. Uh, I mean, I, I've sort of said to people joking in the past that, you know, I, I would walk into a village and there would be a sign saying, you know, breakfast, you know, bacon and eggs and coffee, five euros, this way, 100 metres. And it got to the point where I'd go, can't see it from here, might be further than 100 metres, I'll go to the next one. Um, and, I, and I think a, a lot of people get like that, like you, you don't want to walk any further than you have to, um, which is a little bit silly. 
uh, because there are so many cool things to look at on all of the Camino routes. Um, and so it was probably only on my second or third Camino, that, and, which have all been on the Camino Francis, that I started taking deviations. Um, so a classic one, for example, on the Camino Francis, as you come out of Pamplona, you go up over Alto del Padon, you come down to Uterga on the way to Puente Lorena. After Uterga, there's a, a turning off to the left, which would be what east, to uh, an old Templar church at Unata. Um, it probably adds two kilometres to the overall sort of distance, maybe two or three. Well, it's a wonderful detour. <laughs> Not many people do it. And you're walking across lovely countryside and you get to see this beautiful church and then you come back on Point of Lorena from a, a different direction. And there's these little sort of deviations all along the Camino routes. Um, so, for example, on um, the Via de la Plata, which I hope is going to be my next Camino, um, I've been watching a lot of movies and so on about the Napoleonic Wars and the Peninsula campaigns and things like that. And, of course, the Via de la Plata goes through two or three areas where there were huge battles between the, the British, Spanish, Portuguese and, 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 um, and the French, some massive battle sites. And I noticed that within a few kilometres of the Camino. So I'd be really interested, you know, from a historical perspective to go and see those. And I will, because it's silly <laughs> to just walk past them. Um, so do a little bit of research, see what's you know, coming up along the particular route that you're walking. And, and, and there may be some stuff there that it's worth deviating a, a few kilometres to go and have a look. You might regret it later. Um, the fifth one, I was kind of struggling to come up with a, a fifth mistake or you know, fifth thing that I could have done better. Uh, and I put down water management. Although I did put quite a bit of thought into it and I very quickly learnt about it. I wanted to add it in there because it's something that if you're planning your first Camino, you really do need to put some thought into. Um, and particularly if you're walking at a, a warm time of the year, um, do put some consideration to how much water you're going to be using. So I've, I've found through experience that I generally go through a litre of water every 10 kilometres, pretty much regardless of what the weather's like. I go through a little bit more if it's hotter, but I use an umbrella, so that keeps my water consumption down a bit as well. Um, water consumption is probably going to vary a little bit, but if you have no idea, think maybe in terms of a litre will get you 10 kilometres. Uh, so think about how you're going to carry that water. Uh, I've tried water bladders. I loved them initially. Um, I've gone off them now. And I'll, I'll put a link down below to uh, a video about um, water carrying systems, but I prefer now bottles where I can actually see the level of the water um, and, and easier to top up and those sorts of things. So um, I generally carry about a litre and a half, um, but I'm, I'm looking in the guidebooks as to you know, where the next villages are, uh, where the water fountains are, so I'm always conscious of where I'm going to be topping up my water next. And, and if there's a particularly long stretch or there's a very it's very hot weather, I'm going to carry a little bit more. I, I have a couple of times carried three litres, which is starting to get a bit heavy, and I know I'll probably need to do that on the Via de la Plata. But just mention it so that you can think about how you're going to be carrying your water and that you're consciously thinking ahead, where will I top up water? Um, which is not difficult to do. There's plenty of places to top up water. Just think about it, because um, you know a couple of times... I have run low on water in particularly hot weather and it wasn't particularly pleasant. <laughs> I was really getting dehydrated and you start to hurt more and yeah. But it's easy to manage, you just need to think about it. Okay, so there we go. Five things that I probably could have done better on my first Camino, but let me reiterate what I said right at the beginning. Do not stress about your first Camino if it's coming up. It's not that difficult. <laughs> You turn up with a pack, some gear, and you walk. It really isn't any harder than that. Um, all of this talk of planning and tips and so on, it's just to provide you a little bit more guidance, maybe to uh, alleviate some of the, the nervousness and, and so on about what might be ahead. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple thing to do. We all learn to walk when what, we're two years old. That's all you're going to do, day after day. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.